maybe as a way of introduction. So my name is Paulo Rivera. I head uh, uh, strategy and development for the Ayala group of companies. Uh, so that's my little caveat. Um, healthcare is new to us as a group. Uh, it's not so new to me. I said before, um, before Ayala, I was a management consulting back in the, uh, the US. And I spent uh, six, seven years um, working for some of the large healthcare uh, companies in the United States. Now, so. um, healthcare to us as the Ayala group is a new, never new initiative. Uh, we're trying to do pockets of experimentation uh, across our group. Uh, Yama is here from Bloom. Uh, we're trying to do some uh, cool e-health related uh, stuff uh, over at Bloom. Uh, Ayala Land, uh, we've recently partnered uh, with a medical group uh, called, uh, uh, called Polymed, uh, which was a chain of uh, 10 clinics uh, and 10 hospitals. Uh, across the country, uh, mostly in our Ayala land developments. No. Uh, so if there's anything that you can pick up from what we're doing, as I mean, you know, we're a big combo and we're here in this startup uh, space, it's not that far out. Right? I mean, we're, we're trying to uh, experiment, we're trying to uh, overweight uh, the sector. Uh, I think overall we think it's a, it's a sector that uh, that's worth investing in uh, in the future. I'll, I'll walk you through some key statistics at least of what we're seeing, and then I'll let the, the experts like Farouk and uh, Eric actually tell you uh, what some of the cool innovations that are being done in, in the space. So I'll, I'll talk briefly about, I guess, the macro uh, around the industry, the sector, what we're seeing, uh, why we're excited uh, about the industry, uh, and why we think there's a lot that can be done. And uh, so we're encouraging uh, everyone, anyone who has brilliant ideas, uh, passion for experimentation and innovation uh, to try to do something special uh, in this space. So. Uh, so before anything else, macro view, right? If you think about our position as a, as a country, I, do, I think I only have two slides to share. Um, as if you think about our position uh, in the region vis-a-vis -vis, uh, some of the other countries, uh, healthcare spend in the Philippines is so nascent, it's so small. And I think uh, in total we have 182 uh, US dollars per person that we spend. And that's very low compared to other countries in the region, compared to the rest of the world. Uh, so in a sense, it's you know glass half full, glass half empty, right? It, it, there's a lot of upside. It also means there, there are a lot of inherent challenges in the system. Right? And I hope we can, uh, maybe later I can share some of those with you and uh, you, can, you can appreciate it a little bit more. Uh, but if you look at some of the more developed countries, I mean Singapore, Brunei, uh, even Thailand. Well, Thailand has doubled the per capita spend uh, that we currently have here in the Philippines. Uh, and, and we've looked at Thailand, I've looked at Thailand in the past and Malaysia. They have more robust systems in place, government spending, uh, government investment uh, in healthcare. Uh, and for us, you know, it's still just really starting. Uh, so there's a there's a lot more room for growth. I think um, next page, Ben. So I think overall. Our, our estimate of the market is, is around a 500, 545 billion peso market. Just for, I guess, context, the telco market, uh, which is, as you know, is a two-player industry here, is probably around 250 billion. So this is double the size of the telecom uh, market in the Philippines. Right? And for us, it's, it's a booming market. It's also one of the fastest growing sectors. I think if you look at all the industries in the Philippines, it's double digit growth. Right, so compare that to, say, banking, or compare that to um, power or infrastructure. This is actually one of the fastest growing sectors. Um, unfortunately, there are a lot, again, a lot of inherent problems, a lot of structural inefficiencies um, that can hamper growth if unsolved. You know? uh, there's a few things that I wanted to, to highlight. One is, yes, fine, there's a huge growth, huge upside, uh, but there are a lot of uh, inefficiencies. And I think the first one is in terms of uh, payment. Uh, so if you think about, uh, for those who uh, access healthcare in other countries, uh, a lot of insurance, a lot of prepayment uh, uh, systems that are in place, uh, a lot of government uh, subsidies in place as well. Here in the Philippines, nearly 60% of expenditure is out of pocket. <coughs> so that's huge. No, so it, it's actually it's unfortunate. No, so in other words, if you think about the mass population, 60%, right, will have to pay out of pocket, where 60% of our expenditures are out of pocket. The rest, I mean, we have private insurance, 
right? We have um, Phil Health, which is our social insurance and developers, and then the government contributes another 19%. But just think about the enormity of that, right? So innovation number one, right, can happen in the financing space, right? How do you get people, you know, to pay less out of pocket, right? And I encourage you to think about that, right? Obviously, in other countries, it's created a whole new set of challenges when they locked up private insurance and government subsidies, <coughs> etc. Uh, but if you think about inequity uh, and, um, and, accept and ease of payment, I think this is one thing for the consumer, right? There's a big headache right now. No. Um, caveat there is, sorry guys. The caveat there is, like I said, some other countries, you know, who overspent on private insurance, now they find themselves in a, in a whole different ball here, right? So you have the US, for instance, and you have Japan uh, with their social insurance uh, mechanism. I mean, they have their own problems to deal with. Uh, U.S. has Obamacare because private insurance just took on the life of its own right now. Plus certain things. I think what's important is, I think underneath this is the concept of, afford of affordability. Okay, so how do we make it cheaper, right? Make it more affordable for the normal person uh, to be able to access quality health care. Right, so challenge number one. Challenge number two is in terms of access. Right, so affordability and access. Uh, in the Philippines, uh, what we notice is, and think of the low middle income population. Right, this is you know C, D, um, E um, the segments. This is probably 75, 80 percent of the population right there. Now, uh, the C segment makes less than 50,000 pesos per month household uh, income. Uh, that's your typical uh, white collar worker, uh, supervisor. Um, you know, so think about that, right? So, 78% of the population are low middle income, right? Point number one. Point number two, a big, a vast majority of them, 70%, go to public hospitals and ambulatory settings, right? Mostly for their emergency needs, uh, uh, not really preventative, right? Only 25% uh, go to private hospitals, and only less than 5% less than go to private clinics. Right? Now, unfortunately, there's a lot more private hospitals than there are public hospitals. There's 65, the, the distribution of private versus public in the Philippines is 65% private, and there's 35% public. Now, so then you see the long lines you know, you know, going into the public hospitals. Right? If you go to the provinces, you see a lot of the different tertiary kinds of uh, facilities as well. Uh, and it's, it creates problems in access. Right, so problem number two is how do you make healthcare, quality healthcare, uh, accessible um, to the vast majority of the population? Uh, and then I think you know that's uh, one thing that I, again I encourage uh, you to think about. Uh, we at Ayala, we're, that's something one one of the things we're, we're thinking through, uh, which is why we invested in uh, the medical group trying to put up chains and uh, clinics and, and hospitals. Um, but this is again a place which is ripe for innovation. If you can think of a way, a cheap, affordable, low-cost way to bring healthcare, quality healthcare services to the vast majority of the population, I think you have a, you know, you have a good idea. <coughs> the last piece here, I think, is in terms of uh, the ancillaries. So a big part of the 545 billion uh, pesos spent, uh, which we don't give it up based on the chart, really, is the pharmacy and the lab. And Farouk will talk about this, and Eric, I think, will talk about the lab side. Huge potential for innovation here, too. Now, I think in pharmacy right now, you have uh, it's, you know, it's a fairly uh, competitive um, segment. Obviously, here in the Philippines, we have the big uh, chains, like Mercury. Uh, I think more recently, we've had some of the upstarts, you know, um, the new generic uh, pharmacies come in uh, and carve out a niche uh, for themselves. Uh, but overall, we're seeing a lot more activity on the pharmacy side. Uh, with new entrants coming in, creating actually more room for growth as well as uh, cost-effective solutions. So I think the generic um, bill helped, uh, helped us there. And then on the lab and uh, radiology side, I think uh, potential for uh, innovation as well. I think similarly, you know, how do you bring that uh, to the vast majority of uh, the population? How do you make that more accessible, affordable, um, you know, for low middle income? Right. So, if you think about it, this is probably our version of the industry on a page. Uh, a lot of um, a lot of upside. If I can summarize the points I'd like to make, and maybe uh, for her and Eric to then uh, walk you through what they're doing. Um, number one, healthcare is a sector that we think 
we believe uh, will be one of our growth avenues for the future. Uh, fine, we have the infrastructure, the power problems that we need to deal with right now. Um, but as a country, if you think about 10, 15 years from now, uh, healthcare is going to be one of the spaces that we think uh, will differentiate us uh, within the region. I mean, we have a lot of quality doctors, nurses, healthcare professionals. Uh, we need to create a platform and ecosystem that's conducive uh, for growth, and we need to see a lot more private and public sectors in that. Right. Uh, problem num uh, point number two is inherent in all of that, a lot of challenges in the space, right? which, is, which means a lot, of, uh, a lot of jobs to be done, uh, a lot of uh, pain points uh, in the process, whether it's financing, access, or ancillaries, a lot of innovation that can be done. Uh, so I guess I just wanted to leave you with those two points. You know? Huge sector for uh, to consider, a lot of pain points uh, to evaluate. Um, I guess in closing, we, you know, the other we're trying to do as much as as, as we can. Uh, it's a sector again that we are overweight. If you have any ideas for us, uh, feel free to reach out. Okay. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Really it's tough to hear your thoughts, and uh, you know, just just today having coffee and hearing what you guys are doing, everyone else is doing in the space, it's encouraging and it's exciting, and uh, it's a passion for us, uh, and hopefully it's a passion for you guys too. Um, it's it's something that I think we can you know we can really do something special, uh, yeah. something special. Yeah. Well, 